Good day, Crime Talk aficionados. My name is Scott Reich, and this is Crime Talk. As you can see, we are back in the studio today. Yesterday, I was on the road, but we'll talk about that more tonight on our live show, which begins at 6 p.m. Mountain Time right here on YouTube and Facebook. All right, let's do a quick preview of the docket. First, will the Lori Vallow and Chad DeBell case be delayed? I'll explain. Want to know why crime is out of control? Let me show you Exhibit A, a story of a female predator that still has no problem finding people to date. A video will show you that uh, you can be a victim of crime anywhere, anytime, including your own house. And then finally, our dumb criminal of the day. Let's talk about it. All right, aficionados, let's get to it. But before we do that, a little bit of housekeeping. First, you know the drill. Subscribe if you have not. Like if you do. Hit that bell for notifications. If you can't watch us, you can always listen to us by downloading us on your favorite podcasting app. Not only this episode, but all of the prior episodes as well. All right, let's get to the docket. First, Will the Lori Vallow, Chad DeBell case be delayed? Well, what's going on? Well, John Pryor, on behalf of Chad DeBell, has filed a motion to request permission to appeal two of the district court's orders filed on July 6th of 2022. Well, that begs the question then, what was the order or orders filed on July 6th, 2022? Well, first, the judge denied the motion to disqualify Rachel Smith from representing the state of Idaho in 22-21-1623, uh, which is Chad DeBell's case. Also, the court denied the motion for a list of all homicide and capital cases Smith, Smith has ever or is currently participating in the prosecution of the same. And then the other order was the district court, Judge Boyce, denying two motions filed under seal regarding disqualifying Robert Wood, Rob Wood, from representing the state of Idaho. Now, the final order was the court's ruling on a two-day hearing on June 8th and June 15th of 2022, where apparently several motions were argued. Apparently, several written decisions are entered separately as to different motions taken up during those two days of hearing. And then the court states that based upon certain oral motions during the arguments, as well as written motions and briefings, supporting or opposing motions and incorporating into the order the record from those hearings containing the oral ruling of the court and rationale for such ruling, the court orders the state's motion to dismiss for failure to comply with Idaho Criminal Rule 12b is denied. Wow, that was a mouthful, wasn't it? That sounded like when somebody said, hey, you want to go do something? You're like, ooh, I got to do that thing that we've been talking about. But I'm going to do that thing, you know, sometime when I get around to it because it's an important thing. That's what that order basically says. Now, what is the Idaho Appellate Rule 12 that is at issue here? Well, that's the rule regarding interlocutory appeals. So the Idaho Appellate Rules state that you have to get permission. And part of that criteria for obtaining permission to appeal to the Supreme Court for an interlocutory order or judgment of a district court in a civil or criminal action or from an interlocutory order, which is not otherwise appealable under the rules, but which involves a controlling question of law as to which there is a substantial ground for difference of opinion and in which an immediate appeal from the order or decree may materially advance the orderly resolution of the litigation. So what is an interlocutory appeal exactly? It is an appeal of a ruling by a trial court that is made before the trial itself has concluded. But you have to ask the appellate courts to review the aspect of the case before the trial has been resolved, which is unusual, right? That's why you always litigate the issue. Motions are granted, they're denied. At the end of that process, people can appeal. So what does Pryor have to do to get permission here. First, well, he's got to get permission from Judge Boyce. Assuming that permission is granted, then a petition would be filed to the Idaho Supreme Court, and then the court would have to decide whether they actually want to hear the case. If they don't want to hear the case, the Supreme Court doesn't want to hear the case, then the case marches on, and that issue that is at issue regarding the appeal would be heard if there is, in fact, a conviction of Lori Vallow or Chad Day Bell. 
Now, is the Idaho Supreme Court likely to take up the ruling? Uh, I would say unlikely, unless this issue is so big and the Supreme Court believes that Judge Boyce just got it so wrong and there's no legal rationale for his conclusion, then maybe they would take it up. But I wouldn't hold my breath. Now, of course, we don't know if the judge made a completely erroneous ruling because that's right, the records are sealed. And don't get me started on that because I'm not sure why the public doesn't have a right to know what's taking place in litigation. It's a homicide case involving three people that are now deceased. The accusation is that they were murdered. I'm not sure why the privacy interest is so great. There are probably things going to be embarrassing. I don't think it's going to affect the trial. We should have access to every single motion that has been filed. Sure, redact a little bit here and there, but let us get the gist of what's going on because it kind of makes you feel as though, well, the people somehow don't have a right to know what's going on in their own backyard. I would think the people of Idaho outraged. Please go to crimetalksearch.com, sign up for a background subscription service. You'll be happy you did. If there's anyone out there you were ever curious about, what was in their background, now is the time to do it. If you're going to get involved with somebody, now is the time to do it. When you go to crimetalksearch.com, you put in the name, literally millions of public records are searched and a report is generated. And it's going to give you a report. If they have multiple social media accounts, you're going to find it. If they have multiple phone numbers, multiple email addresses, it's going to be found. And more importantly, you're going to get information regarding criminal history. Hopefully the person you're searching has none whatsoever, but if it's there, it's going to be found. You're going to get everything you'd want to know, whether you're going into business or whether you're going into a personal relationship, you're going to be able to find out the information you want to know. So go to crimetalksearch.com, sign up today. You'll be happy you did. I said here in a moment, uh, why is crime so rampant? Well, let me show you exhibit A. Look at this teenager. Yeah, this teenager who started a brawl with a New York City Police Department officer um, and put him in a chokehold has already been released because of the city's bail laws. Oh, I know he's just a teenager. He's, oh, come on, he's just a kid. Well, take a look at this. Shows this 16-year-old boy punching the cop in the head before grabbing him around the neck and slamming him repeatedly into the metal railings. Now, why did this happen? Well. Apparently, the officer confronted the boy who allegedly jumped over a turnstile in East Harlem over the weekend, and that's when the teenager lashed out. He was reportedly previously been arrested for possession of a loaded firearm, as well as robbery was released after appearing the next day in court. Now, another teenager, a 16-year-old girl, ducked under the turnstile with him and initially tried to drag officers off uh, the boy while the uh, punches are going, as you can see. Now, she was dragged away by a female officer before fighting with her, and her friend was arrested by the NYPD officers. Now, Patrick Lynch, he is the president of the Police Benevolent Association of the City of New York, and said, if New Yorkers want to know why the chaos in the transit system is not improving very quickly, this is why. The criminals underground know they can get in a brawl, choke a cop, and be back out in hours. Cops are putting ourselves on the line to make the subway safer, but we are feeling abandoned by the justice system that won't back us up. The boy, who cannot be publicly identified because of his age, you know, juvenile and all, don't want him to get traumatized in any way. Well, like I said, he, he jumped the uh, barrier and that's when all this started. Uh, the brawl started right about 6 p.m. when the boy became verbally aggressive with the and for over three minutes with the officers before the officer attempted to arrest him. The boy started raining blows down on the officer and trying to force him uh, to let go by slamming him around the station. His face is uh, covered in blood by the end of the footage with officers managing to pin the teenagers down. He was arrested, charged with assault on a peace officer, obstruction of governmental administration and resisting arrest. Now, as I said, he was released on his own recognizance and the teenage girl uh, had basically the same charges and it's unknown exactly what happened to her. Apparently one of the officers suffered swelling of his head and shoulders and was treated and released from a local hospital. The other officer was treated and released as well. Now let's just say a couple of things. I cannot wait uh, until uh, the officers are sued 
uh, for obviously viciously attacking uh, this young man because he jumped over the turnstile. I mean, is this really what we want uh, law enforcement to be doing is, you know, enforcing such petty laws? Mm, yes, because you get more of what you tolerate. That's exactly it. Okay. Take it from a criminal defense attorney. You want to stop crime? Well, you have to enforce the crime that is there. If people think they're getting a free pass, or as the court told my client yesterday, she wasn't going to accept a deal because it was like going to Costco and getting a volume discount on crime. Guess what? They're going to keep doing it. The other thing, now, if I had acted this way in public, my parents would have been the first to say that I needed a good old fashioned beating. And if I hit an officer, they would be the first ones to say, send him to prison. And that used to be the case. You used to assault a police officer and you went to prison. Not so much anymore. Now get it. You may not always like the cops. Hell, they may not like you, but they are there on that fine line that is keeping us a civilized society. When there is no respect for the law, chaos will ensue. Next on the docket, some more good news. A female predator who's in prison for doing inappropriate things with underage boys that she met online has now posted TikTok videos asking for pen pals. And basically the uh, authorities are saying there's nothing they can do. Miriam Van Lith, she's 43 and she's serving 10 years behind sentence in Idaho specifically the South Idaho Correctional Institution near Boise for, like I said, doing terrible things to a 14 and 17 year old boy back in 2018 and enticing other children over the internet. Despite her crimes, which um, she actually made contact with their, her previous victims on Snapchat and Facebook, she's made a return to social media. Um, that's right. She is on TikTok begging for male or female pen pals. Van Lith posted eight videos to her account, which uh, got her more than 33,000 followers. Now, prisoners can use a system called JPay to send emails and videos to people on the outside world, although they can't access social media directly. That means someone else will have created a TikTok for Van Lith and uploaded the clips, apparently with her blessing. Uh, her profile has since been suspended. Now, although other TikTok users recorded clips, which they've shared on their own accounts, usually while expressing a bit of horror, uh, ex explain Miss Van Lift's behavior. Now, the uh, female predator is suspected of molesting other boys, including a 15-year-old, uh, but had another charge dropped against her for her taking a plea deal. Now, how does this uh, predator manage to get video onto the platform remains a mystery and uh, she has declined to say as well. Now, Van Lith has said that she's made more than 500 new contacts through JPay, which I said is the communication service for prisoners. And um, since posting the TikTok, which has since been taken down alongside her account, just goes to show you, ladies and gentlemen, I guess the penal system will just have to update when it comes to the um, times. You, who has time while you're in custody to write a good old fashioned letter no, just go to the masses and get 33,000 people and have people send your money uh, on books. Become a pen pal. Who knows? Maybe there's maybe there's some marriage pro proposals out there for Miss Van Lith. You never know. Let's just hope they're at least over 18. All right. You can be a victim anywhere, anytime, including your own house. Take a look at this video. This is crazy. La Las Vegas police are asking for help identifying a suspect who tried to rob a man and then chased him across the street with the handgun that failed before he tried to fire it. Take a look at this. The suspect fled in a black, newer model black sedan with black wheels and dark tinted windows after the incident, which was captured on a neighbor's ring video. You can see the video shows the suspect chasing the, the resident out of his own garage while trying to fire at him. Across the street, the resident pauses as the neighbor's gate and the suspect tries one more time to shoot him. When the gun doesn't fire, he runs off. This person is dangerous. First of all, committing a burglary, going into somebody else's house with a firearm, and then when they get discovered, chases the victim across the street. And this isn't a homicide case for the mere fact that this guy was an idiot and doesn't know how to clean his gun 
or a jammed or whatever. I don't know. But this man is a danger. So hopefully has somebody has some information identifying this guy so he can get off the streets and go to prison for a long time where he belongs. Next on the docket, our dumb criminal. A Florida man was arrested Friday for driving a stolen pickup truck to a Space Force base in Brevard County, which is in Florida, in what he called a mission from the President of the United States. Please meet Mr. Corey Johnson. Now, when Mr. Johnson tried to get on base, he claimed that the president told him in his mind that he needed to take the vehicle and warn government officials that there were aliens fighting Chinese dragons. Now, Johnson was arrested and booked into the Brevard County Jail. It would appear that there were not issues as it related to his mental health and competency, at least not yet. He was charged with grand theft of a motor vehicle, Bond has been set at $3,000. I would say the fact that he didn't go immediately to the mental health ward at the hospital would indicate to me that uh, more than likely some sort of illegal narcotics were at issue. But either way, Mr. Johnson, you are a dumb criminal of the day. Congratulations. All right. We will have more talk about Lori Vallow tonight, 6 p.m. Mountain Time. And we will also have other stories to talk about as well. Please join us 6 p.m. Mountain Time right here, Facebook, as well as YouTube. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time on Crime Talk.